Brother Raymond, would you open the word of prayer for me? Lord, we do thank you for this and other day of life. Thank you for Lord today. You allow us to come out here in your house here to fellowship and worship. Help us here today, Lord, that we might bring honor and glory to you. Preaching and singing and being a part of this service. We want to invite you here, Lord, to need your help. We're so thankful for your mercy and your grace, Lord, that cannot be measured. It's not your will that any can perish. We thank you today, Lord, and welcome back out all the sins and no life cast out. Continue to pray for those lost and undone today, Lord. Continue to draw them with your spirit. You know, they can't be drawn unless you draw them. Uh, we think about the revival coming up, Lord. We can pray for it, Lord. Everything said and done in it, Lord, we might be revived in our heart. We know that revival starts in the hearts of God's people. Help us to be submissive to your will. Remember the many prayer requests that's already been handed in, Lord. We know there's people that's had surgeries that are pursued, others, Lord, need to help today. We thank you, Brother Chuck, Lord. We know he yeah. already is one. He has need of him. We're praying, Lord, reach down and touch him, Lord, and help him. He might be made whole. Remember all those today, Lord, that's facing surgeries, chest has been taken, Lord, to a good report in the back. Help us here as a body of believers, Lord, seeking your will to be submissive to it. Every the day of our life, pray for our country and our leaders today, the direction of our nation. There might be a revival in this country, Lord, the people will search out the old path and find it, Lord, and not walk therein. Pray for Brother Brad, he's a virtue of Brother's life here today. Help us to stir, stir up that spiritual gift of living within that you granted us. That your will might be done. We pray and ask these things in your thanks in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
um, sing this a lot, but anyway, we, this is a good song. It's, it's good to sing, and um, there is joy in the, in the journey that we're on. That's um, right. If, if you're not having joy in this journey, then I don't know, you need to do a checkup, maybe. Um, but but there is there is joy in the journey.
and sometimes even on the radio I think they do that, a broadcast network is supposed to take the place of that. I looked at my phone and, and, and I, I noticed there, because you can look and say, well, this is the first time I've ever seen this, but I also noticed I received a couple other types, and there's two other types that you'll receive on your, on your text or on your phone when they're trying to call you. Uh, one is an Amber Alert. Somebody's missing, your phone will, will ring or vibrate, mine vibrates, and uh, it'll alert you that there's somebody that's missing. I, I, I think that's all right. If I had to love one, I'd want everyone to be searching, wouldn't you? Right. Uh, you find there's another one. I know many times I had this also in the history of my phone. It showed a, a storm. It said there's flooding going on in your area. Or, you know, beware, there's a storm in your area. Now, I'm okay being alerted. Aren't you okay with that? Uh, I'm fine with that. I was shocked to hear that, uh, uh, so I was kind of, it kind of inspired me as I got that text, I was kind of Im impressed, I, that's a pretty high power sending me a text. Yeah. And uh, I was kind of shocked that there's, there's many didn't want, want to get it. Fact is, I, I was doing some reading and the, some had filed some lawsuits. I don't want to hear from the president. <laughs> well, you know, as I thought about that, uh, did you know there's a higher power that wants to get your attention? Amen. Now, maybe you uh, don't want to hear about it, but praise God, I, I believe there's a higher authority. Now, if I was at my home and, and the, my fire alarm went off, can you imagine just ignoring it? We wouldn't do it, would we? We wouldn't. Even though... Uh, my fire alarm, I, I don't care for the noise. It's a screeching, loud noise. And you know, I tell you, sometimes when the battery's going bad, you know what happens. You hear this, oh, it's an awful thing. You even push that to test it. You know what, I'm glad there's an alarm system, aren't you? Yeah. We find uh, there's oftentimes there's false alarms. In Hawaii, they had a false alarm here recently. Uh, they thought a ballistic missile was heading their way, but it was, it was a false, it was a false alarm. I'm going to tell you what, when the Lord sends an alarm, it ain't going to be false. Amen. You're going to find you better count on it. That's right. And some say, well, they think uh, the president's going to send some, some garbage or something like that. I, I don't believe that'll take place, but if it goes off, I'm going to take heed to it. The Bible says, uh, tells us in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, warns of uncertain sound. You know you got to make sure that the sound you, you know is correct. Even actually this week we also had a cross, not only did I get a text from the president, it was kind of an alarm, I, uh, we heard across our, our loudspeaker at my work a siren sound. And we all looked at each other and we didn't know, we said, is that a tornado? Or is that a fire alarm? Now we must need a little more training because we didn't know to run outside or run into the shelter. But then it came across and said, calm down, said this was just, uh, it just ignore it. Just ignore uh, that warning. Now I want you to know the things that God tells us we should not ignore. But the fact is we're good at ignoring an alarm. We're good at doing that. It's, in, it's important that we identify it. The Bible had an alert system. A world broadcast system in place. And they use trumpets. But to be honest, the trumpet's not my favorite instrument. I'm glad my girls learned the piano. <laughs> I can't imagine uh, learning the trumpet in your house. Now, praise God, some people play the trumpet, and praise God, if you don't get mad at me, amen. If you play the trumpet, you play it, amen. Play it for Jesus, amen. amen. And if there's an alert, amen, let me know about it. The trumpet's allowed. Uh, uh, instrument. And you know what? Uh, we find that there's a situation to be warned. I have a God. When they heard the trumpet, it was loud and it was clear. Mm. That's how my Lord is today. Mm. He's loud and clear. And I want to share this morning a few things. Amen. Praise God. In my God's alert system. You'll find that we're going to turn over here in the book of uh, 
Exodus chapter 19. It's a familiar story, a familiar passage. You find uh, Moses is going up the mountain. God has desired to meet with his people. He's on Mount Sinai. And it's hard to visualize this, this here. We find in chapter 19 of Exodus, verse 16, it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders, there were lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mountain. The, notice what it says. A voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet, the, meet with God and they stood in the hither <coughs> part of the mountain. The Mount Sinai was together on the smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as a smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. Verse 19 it says, And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, said Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. This was a, a trumpet that was loud and clear. This was a trumpet, and praise God, I'm glad to tell you what, I hope this morning you've experienced this trumpet. It was the presence of God. Amen. We, uh, maybe you can remember, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yeah. Now, if you've gone through this life and never gotten scared with the presence of God, my desire is that you'd hear this morning. We had our little grandson over, they spent the night, my two little grand boys. One's a baby, one's a little over two. And uh, little Jackson, he's got a little, uh, he's got his way of going to bed, you know. It's got to be a certain way, it's not that, it ain't going to work. <laughs> and one of the things, praise God, that he wants done, before he, before he shuts his eyes, the last thing, he wants to sing a song. Hey. Now me and, me, me and me and Papa have to sing a song with him. And uh, so we get down there and we sing and we go, Jesus loves me, this I know. Oh, ain't that wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I want little Jackson to know? That Jesus loves him. Amen. Yes. I want everybody this morning to know that Jesus loves them. Amen. Now, in his little mind, we tell him Jesus loves him. And I'm going to instill it in them. I believe there's many children that have grown up and they don't know that Jesus loves them. I want them to lay their head down at night and know that Jesus loves them. I want you, the folks in the nursing home this afternoon, I want them to know that Jesus loves them. I tell you what, I want them all to know that Jesus loves them this morning. But there's going to be a time, little Jackson. And praise God for this time. We've already instilled him there's a God that loves him. But there's one day there's going to be the voice of God that's going to speak to him. And you know what? I'm glad when that day comes, when you find the presence of God comes down and he cares for everybody, he desires everybody this morning. And one day, I remember, praise God, being a child, and when God spoke to me, you know what? I knew I wasn't right. I tell you, when you get in the presence of a living God and He speaks to you, you know what? You're on holy ground. Yeah. You know what you realize? I'm not worthy to be here. Right. These folks heard the siren. They heard the trumpet. They heard the alarm. They said, God's presence is here. And you know what they did? They trembled. A lot of people talk big. I get tired of it. But one day when I, when I see God, you know what you're going to do? And I tell you what, these folks have never, never gotten saved. But they say, boy, one day I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to tell Him. I'll see what's going on, why all of this has happened to me. You know what they're going to do? They're going to experience the fear of God. That's right. It's easy to talk big. But when God gets in your presence, the fear of God is going to show up. And if you've never experienced the fear of God, you know what that fear was? I realized I wasn't ready. 
this folks gone through life and never been lost. I tell you, you can't get saved until you get lost. Amen. When I got lost, I realized I was in trouble and I was headed to a devil's hell. And that scared me. Boy, you kind of scare people that to heaven. Oh, I tell you what, that's what it takes. I want it. I tell you, we need to get the fear of God in us. Amen. And praise God, it's a healthy fear. I tell you what, I try to put the fear of God in my grandchildren. Don't touch something hot. I try to get the fear of God and don't cross that street without holding my hand. I try to put the fear of God in them. I do. He said, well, you're mean. No, I'm not. I love them. Man. And God loves us so much, he's going to try to put the fear of God in us. Mm. And praise God for the sound of the trumpet. Amen. There was a time it was not a verbal. Maybe it didn't sound like a trumpet. But when God knocked on my heart's door, and you remember the day when you got saved, he knocked on your heart's door, and you knew you weren't right. And then, praise God, there was a trumpet that was sounding. I heard the alarm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you for that alarm. In the book of Amos, chapter 3, we won't turn there, but verse 6, it says, Shall the trumpet blow in the city, and the people not be afraid? I don't understand it. It's got to take God to get them. I can tell people about everything. I can preach. I can do whatever it is. I can try to witness with somebody. Said you better get it right, and they'll look at you, and there ain't no fear. There's something wrong with that. And you know what? I think it's a serious matter now. If my, my phone vibrates and all of a sudden I get another presidential thing and it tells me something serious, I tell you what, I, I, I respect that. I do. There's an alarm there. There's a system in place for a reason, amen. And my God, He has an alarm system and He knocks on your heart's door and He says, I want to warn you, you're not ready. Aren't you glad for that day he told me you weren't ready? Yeah. He didn't just pat you on the back and say, well, Jesus loves you and you just go home and just keep on with your life. No, there was a time in my life he told me I wasn't ready. Sure. Boy, I'm glad for that alarm, aren't you? Have you heard that? Did you ever hear that? Did you ever hear that sound in your life? Amen. Yeah. Praise God. If you haven't heard that, I hope you hear it this morning. Amen. Boy, I'm so glad I heard the alarm. Paul on the Damascus Road heard it. You know what he realized that day? He wasn't ready. Boy, I'm glad that God has an alarm system. Well, you find not only that, but you find I, I've heard the alarm not, not only from his presence. Boy, his presence. I'm not, as, I'm not, I'm still fearful of my God, but I tell you what, his presence is sweet now. Yeah. You remember when uh, when you felt first heard that alarm, it bothered you. You were uncomfortable. Amen. I like folks getting uncomfortable. I like you to squirm. Amen. I don't want you being comfortable in your sin. But praise God, there's another alarm that came in in the book of Leviticus. You'll find there in chapter 25. We're not going to. I'm not going to read all that. A lot of reading there, but it's a great study on the year of the jubilee. You know what? The word jubilee actually in the Hebrew means ram horn. I thought that's kind of neat. The word jubilee means ram horn. It's a trumpet. And there would be, in the year of jubilee, you'll find the 50th year, you'll find there would be a trumpet that would be blown throughout all the land. And you know what happened that day of the jubilee? The slaves, those that were in bondage and sins, would be set free. Amen. Now, can you imagine? Here you've been working for years. Maybe you possibly could have been working for 50 years. And all of a sudden, uh oh, I lost my hand. I got the text from the president. All of a sudden you got the, all of a sudden you got the text, amen. All of a sudden, now mine's on vibrating. I, I noticed I failed it. And, and some of them, they're going across off in the, uh, my office there where I work. And phones are going off here. Phones are going off there. Phones are going over here. Can you imagine, amen, praise God, when they looked on there and they said, you've been set free. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to try to block that. <laughs> no. You know what? Can you imagine? I like to say it. We hear the trumpet sound, amen. They dropped everything and praise God. Uh, they, they took off. 
I remember being a kid in school. Remember those days? And you know, there's one thing I did like to hear. It was the dismiss bell. Anybody remember liking that? Boy, I tell you, if time ever stopped, it was when it was like watching that clock, when can I go home? You remember that? I don't know, time it never went slow like it does back then. It goes like fast now. But praise God, I look at that and all of a sudden we hear that bell. Woo, you know what? It was like a stampede. A stampede. Now praise God, you know what? I'm here to tell you what. If there was a day in my life, it's hard to imagine, but I'm glad for the conviction. There was an alarm that said I was in trouble. Woo, I needed to tell you know that. You know, a lot of people know they're in trouble today and they don't do nothing about it. But praise God, there was a day I did something about it. And you know what? The Bible said the Spirit beareth witness with my spirit. I'm a child of God. I've been set free. Yes, thank Ooh, you. Amen. Anybody been set free from their yes. sin? That you can't get rid of it. You can't work it off. You can't try to pay it off. You can't do anything. Come to church ain't going to get rid of it. But praise God, there the trumpet blew. And I'm glad for the day I realized I had new life in me. That God that was on the outside, He came on the inside. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, we ought to be excited about that. <clears throat> Good night. When did you get, uh, get unexcited about being set free? Praise God. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that sin. He took care of it. That's right. Boy, you can't get better than that. And amen, when they heard that, what a day that was. What an excitement for that, that the trumpets were blown. They heard it. They took heed to it. Boy, this morning, listen to the trumpet. Listen to the Lord. Amen. You find it doesn't stop there. The, the text we read this morning lists many things about trumpets. And you know, uh, when the trumpet blew, there were also many different reasons. It praised God, it was to let us know His presence. I like that one. It was to be set free. Praise God and set free. But then he also was the plan of God. Anybody want to know the plan of God? Wouldn't you like to know the will of God for your life? Wouldn't it be good to know it? The Israelites wanted that. And you know what God did? He gave them some trumpets. And there are times, he said, when you blow the trumpet this way, hear what you do. You gather yourself at the tabernacle door. You gather for worship. Praise God. That's the will of God. Amen. I like that. Everyone's trying to find some deep thing, amen. Oh, what does God want? Amen. Just listen to the trumpet. And you'll find it. He speaks to you, amen. He said, why don't you just come here to gather for some worship? You know he deserves some worship, doesn't he? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then there's other times the trumpet blew, and it was in a sense for work. You know what you needed to do? Journey. we got to pick up camp. we got to get moving. we got to go on. And so when they heard that trumpet, boy, they didn't hesitate. They grabbed their bags. They got the tent down. They said, we're moving. Amen. Praise God. They listened. It was important to them. They didn't want to be left behind. They want to be in the will of God. They want to be under the protection of God, the providing of God. Can you imagine some of those, amen? This is, I think it might be in Numbers chapter 11 talks about those on the uttermost part of camp. Boy, they didn't hear the trumpet. They didn't listen to the trumpet. They, he didn't heed to that. I, I tell you what, God was pleased about that. But you know, this morning, God desires that you might be in His plan for your life. Amen. And you say, well, I don't know what that is. He is loud and He is clear. Yeah. We try to make it more difficult than it is. Amen. You just follow Him and you'll find it'll be the best journey. There's joy in the journey. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes He called them to worship. Sometimes He called them to work. Then there was a time when they blew. It said, grab your weapon. It's a war. You know what? I, we need everybody in the battle. And there's time. Fact is, every day is a battle. It's not easy. But when the trumpet blows, you better be on guard. I tell you, the devil's a roaring lion. He's trying to get you. He's trying to get in your life. He's trying to, he's trying to get in your relationship. He's trying to get in everything. When you hear the trumpet blow, you better get ready. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad he's got a plan for our life. You know, I thought about, it'd be good. I'd, I wish I had a trumpet. 
I like to go to everyone's house in the morning, on <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> Get outside your bedroom window. And blow the trumpet. Would anybody like that? You know, the fact is, I don't. I don't care for alarms, to be honest. I hate wake up alarms. I tell you, it just gets me in a bad mood. I mean, I don't, and typically, I'm not a bad mood morning person, I'm not. But the one thing I don't want to hear is an alarm. It's worst kind, it's all kind. You know, some of you got those, you got a rattle noise. I don't know how you even start your day that way. It's awful. The only way we do, we start with some music, some soothing music. That's what we do. You know, I got to have that. I don't like that alarm. I'm going to tell you what, I, we need an alarm. We need an alarm just to say, let's go worship. I think if you listen, you'd hear the trumpet. Yeah. Amen. We need an alarm to get in the work of God. There's a journey. There's a plan for your life. Amen. So I don't know what it is, but good night when you didn't listen. I, you seek and you'll find it. Amen. There's a battle. We're onward Christian soldiers. Amen. There's a battle. It's a raging. And I tell you what, times are running out. Well, we find, amen, praise God. There's alarm. You know what Paul said to the Hebrews? He said, you know what? Your ears are dull hearing. It's kind of amazing. I, I've noticed this before. You ever wonder why, how, how someone could live right next to a railroad? We did when we first got married. The train went by. Kind of the, shake the, would shake the, uh, the pictures on the wall, the windows. And uh, you know what, after a while, I didn't even notice it. Isn't that odd? You'll have folks come into your house and go, what's that noise? Oh, well, I don't know, I never noticed that. It might be a ticking of a clock. It might be whatever it is. I'm, I, I don't know. We've got a, a drippy faucet again. I was hoping we'd get used to that drippy faucet noise. <laughs> But you know, oftentimes when the Lord speaks, I don't know why, we get dull ears. Yes. But there's a trumpet. There's an alarm. It's for your own good, by the way. Amen. Hallelujah. When it, when, whatever it is, saying in praise the Lord. He said you're dull of hearing when you ought to be teachers, you need to be taught again. And you know, I believe even in my own life I see that. I mean, sometimes I grow, sometimes, oh, I tell you, I need a stirring from God. I need to come down and I need to be more what I should be. I'm not what I used to be, but I sure am not what I should be, amen, this morning. Lastly, there's a trumpet that's going to sound. And it will be loud and clear, folks, yeah. when his patience runs out. When his patience runs out. There's many verses in the Bible. I'm going to read for you one in Zep Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. Let me just listen to this. It says, the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasten greatly even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness. Uh, uh, desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds, a thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities, against the high uh, towers, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dumb. You buy the verse up. Verse 18 uh, says, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in that day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by fire of je jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy radiance of all them that dwell in the land. Now, I don't like it. I, there is nobody more patient than my God. My God has been patient with you. My God is long in mercy. My God, I tell you what, praise God, He doesn't have any inkling like you and I. It was you and I. We wouldn't have put up with any of us. But He's patient. But one day, His patience will run out and the trumpet is going to sound. I find there's a couple stages in that. I like that. We, we, I believe there's a rapture. I believe He's going to deliver us, amen, out of wrath. And 
one day you'll hear the Bible says a trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise first, we which are alive. Anybody alive here this morning? Amen. I'm kind of concerned. Amen. Praise God. I will, we'll be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. To comfort one another with those words. But I'm going to tell you what, you're saved, that's a comforting trumpet. But if you're not saved, his patience has run out. You'll find the book of Revelation, chapter 8, verse 1, says there's going to be seven trumpets, there's seven thunders. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to warn you, you need to be ready. Yeah. Time has run out. Now, I know uh, we've got to have model students here when you were kids. <clears throat> but there's, there was, uh, my favorite bell was the going home bell. But you know there was a bell I didn't like, and I don't know if I really had it, but others had it. It was the tardy one. Mm. Some of you look like you were the tardy ones, I can tell. <laughs> a tardy bell. And you know what? That says you're late. I mean, my kids, when they were even going to school, they went to the Christian school, I mean, if they got, they got some sort of demerit, they got some sort of little check mark, you're late, oh boy, you get so many of these. I tell you what, you don't want something, you don't want those tardy things. A lot of folks think, and i got plenty of time. A lot of people say, well, uh, tomorrow, Maybe even this revival, I don't know. But you know what? You're not promised to tomorrow. And I tell you, the best thing you can do, amen, I tell you what, with the very first alarm, the presence of God, He speaks to you, and He's told you, you need to get right with Him. Praise God. Uh, don't be tardy. We need to make a move. He ain't going to save you by forcing you. It's a move you got to make. He said, would you come unto me? Amen. And when you come unto Him, He does that wonderful work mm. that you can't do. Yeah. Amen. The Bible said today, if you hear His voice, harden mm. not your heart. He's been calling. You've heard some trumpets. What's it going to take? Boy, let's listen to the trumpet this morning. Let's all stand. Father, help us. You know our hearts this morning. You know what stage of life we're in. You know this morning if, if we've been saved. You know this morning if we're lost. You know the times you've blown the trumpet and you've tried to get our attention. And you've seen the time where we said, well, maybe tomorrow, maybe next time, next week. We put it off. Lord, help us realize there's a day you'll run out of patience and there'll be one last trump. Lord, I pray there's one last trump here this morning. I pray we'd listen, we'd heed you. Father, help us to come and say, Lord, would you forgive me? I can't get rid of that sin, Lord. I'm sorry for that sin. And Lord, would you cleanse me from all that unrighteousness? Help me, Lord. Maybe we're here this morning, Lord. Father, help us to get excited about the day we had the trumps and we were set free. Lord, you still tell me that. Lord, how good it is. Father, maybe we're here and we want to know the plan of God. Help us to listen to that trumpet. To listen to that alarm. It's for our own good. So many times we do it our own way. We go our direction. Help us, Lord, this morning that we have a desire to go your direction. Lord, have your way speak to our hearts in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I think if you listen, you'll hear an alarm. You'll get an alert. That alert says you're not ready, boy. Jesus wants you to get ready today. That alarm says, you are ready. Get excited about being ready. Maybe that alarm says, hey, I, I've got a plan. Oh, would you listen?
wait till that last trump. Devil's a master at convincing you you'll have more time. Now don't listen to a false alert. Listen to the, the Lord. You'll say, you're not ready. Why don't you come? You've got a need this morning. Why don't you give it to Jesus? Call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, it's so good to know Jesus loves you. He desires more.